Teachers of Reddit, what are the new student groups replacing the ones, emo, goth, drama, etc., that used to be a thing when you were attending school? For some reason, all of the boys are going for big dirty mullets at the moment. I thought it was a localized thing but I was talking to some teacher friends and it's happening to their schools too. Yes. Where are you in the world? My 17-year-old nephew and all his mates have big dirty mullets here in New Zealand. As a teacher here in NZ, boys with mullets and skullets are definitely a vibe, they mix with the future trades and stoners. My 31-year-old brother, married, four kids, pretty high-level job, has had the dirtiest mullet for the last year. Shaves designs in the side, because as my niece explains, it increases his speed. Quarantine probably just not bothered to cut the hair vi, notice that people either get a buzz or a mullet no in between laughing out loud except there's only one guy with a mullet in my year and he mainly grows it out for his mohawk. The I want to become a YouTuber, influencer students. My son actually told me recently that if he couldn't hack it in his first career choice, graphic design, then he'd become a YouTuber as his fallback plan. I'm pretty sure that if I were drinking something at that moment I'd have spit it all over the room. Honestly, it'd be much more logical to switch those two around. Not that a degree in graphic design is guaranteed to give you work, but it's definitely a safer career path than becoming a eater. YouTubing is one of those low flyer slash high ceiling kind of ventures that seems super ape feeling. Literally, anyone with a camera phone can start a YouTube account, but earning money is literally a career. People easily put in 8 to 12 hour workdays, every single day to get a channel going. And you can't do it with YouTube alone. You need to branch out with every platform like Twitch, Twitter, Insta, etc. Most channels have dozens of people working behind the scenes like PR managers, search engine optimization researchers, professional video editors, even in script writers. It is very rare for the dude with a camera to find success unless they already have a niche skill that would probably already be marketable outside of YouTube. Seriously, it's not as easy as some channels make it seem. I've been working on my web series for three years now and only in the last five months did it gain any sort of traction. I have a full-time job in video production, and my YouTube channel uses an entire week planning slash scripting a video, a full day shooting, then two weeks straight editing every night after work for two to three hours. After that, I still have to write the description, make the thumbnail, and post across social channels. Fortunately, it's my passion project, I love it, and don't rely on it for my income, but it's a wicked process. Edit, since someone asked, you can. Web link. I've seen the YouTube generation criticized, as all generations are, for being lazy and not wanting to put effort into things. Being honest I was a bit guilty of it myself, thinking most of the work was in recording and only a little of putting it together. Then I actually tried a very simple video series for my own channel and was astounded by how the hours just disappear into it. I'm no stranger to complex CAD work and personal computer projects, but video editing is just exhausting. It's so incredibly simple until you try it, I wonder how many other things like that are out there. The other thing that struck me when looking through it is this, I thought I was at the bottom with my size of channel, but I'm probably closer to the middle than I realize. I recently broke 1k views per month which was a big milestone for me. Then I look at channels raking in the views by million or tens of millions a month and think those are so far above me. Which they are, then I find channels doing the same content as me that are basically as far behind me as I am behind the top channels. I think 1k views a month are nothing, and then I see channels with loads of work put into them that haven't had 1k views in total across a whole decade and dozens slash hundreds of videos. Hearing successful streamers describe their work life instantly killed the allure of that career. Even if you're an independent streamer who's only playing video games 4 hours per day, you're spending the rest of your waking hours preparing for your next stream, researching the new game meta, doing your own PR, editing videos, and constantly interacting with your followers who expect you to be always available for personal interactions on social media and Discord. You have no time off. You can't ever take any vacation or sick leave because you will see a significant drop in your Twitch subscriptions and YouTube algorithm exposure. And God help you if your fan base can't behave themselves and starts to get weird, like with some fans who stalk, fox, or create sexually explicit media of you and your co-workers. 
And all of that work and stress is after you've grinded enough to make it big and start seeing a profit. YouTubers and streamers need to unionize. Being a YouTube is like being a game dev, sounds cool when you're a kid, then you realize working 60 hour weeks for less pay than many jobs sucks. For YouTube slash Twitch, you also have to win a small lottery before you have any chance of making a single penny, let alone a livable wage. Genuine question, what would they be able to ask for and who they would be able to ask it from if they did unionize? Unionize? They're independent ventures. They aren't even like gig drivers where they're providing a service in a pseudo-employee relationship, it's like every corner store forming a union. It seems like it's the modern day equivalent of I want to be a TV slash movie star. I had a roommate that worked with kids and she told me that virtually 100% of them have no aspirations other than being a YouTuber. Take hope. I know a huge group of kids from 17 to 9 and not one of them aspire to be YouTubers. Sure, a few of them would like to be, but no it's not going to happen. The whole YouTube slash influencer thing makes me think of vaudeville and I wonder if any sociological historians have done any comparison studies. I'm an English teacher from Germany and I actually had my students write texts on this subject a few months ago. From memory, most mentioned groups were football players, gamers, and horse girls. Horse girls is most mentioned. Mentioned by several students. Horse girls were the worst. The only thing they talked about was how their horse or pony was doing. They'd always reek of horse. One of my best friends was a horse girl in junior high. She was obsessed with both horses and doing it. As an adult, I know all her sex stories were complete fiction. The horse was real. I just have to add this horse girl story. I am 70. My best friend was 51 when this happened. We were both middle school counselors. We were camping with a group of our friends and I saw that she had a bookmark that had I love horses, written across the letters all connected. She too, deemed me it was her middle school bookmark and that she had been a horse girl. I gave her a hard time about that. Lots of laughs. Months later, she is in hospice, dying from a rare liver disease. I was talking with her sister and going through my photos of the summer and came across the pics of the horse girl bookmark. Her sister laughed about her being a horse girl when she was 14. This was a heartbreaking time, as she was a wonderful caring person whom we all loved. After hours there I left because her life's end was near and I thought it best for just family. Drive 40 minutes to get home. Retrieved my mail. New Yorker magazine. I have so many that I usually put them in a stack, it was late, and I was tired and sad. I sat down at the table and opened the magazine. It was the comic edition, and it turned at once to this long comic strip about a middle school horse girl dealing with the issues of middle school. Phone rang, and it was her sister. She had just passed. I think she was saying goodbye. This is a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing this part of your past with us. You are most welcome. She was such a lovely person who died before her time. I miss her very much. She was a great middle, school counselor who was funny, kind, and adventurous. That said, I think stories about middle school horse girls are so interesting. I remember being in 8th grade back in 1965 and sitting in class next to a girl with a hand-tooled leather horse wallet, and she was always drawing pics of horses, but this was not too surprising since I lived in a West Texas ranching town. Horse girls are eternal. Oh, man the horse girls. I did two years of veterinary studies before changing branch. So. Many. Horse girls. We'd call them the Chawal, from French Cheval. I was a horse girl in elementary school. By about junior high slash high school I knew to stay far away from that topic, even though I worked in a barn every day after school. Being tarred with that brush would kill you, and I already had enough reasons for people to think I was nuts. I still own a horse to this day and love her dearly, but horse girls drive me nuts. I went to a college with a well-known equestrian program and refused to participate. I just did not like many of the other girls who rode. I will tell you this, many horseback riders are armchair experts and are insanely critical of any other rider, even a successful top-level competitor. I don't know why this is, but it happens all the time. Also, many of the girls were incredibly wealthy and entitled. Those things are not always combined, but when it came to horses, it seemed like most of the girls were both. 
I think many spoiled girls turn to writing because they have a tough time interacting with others, and the parents throw money at the girls to make sure they're having fun doing something, but it turns into a spiral of entitlement and money. You also get very addicted to proving yourself and competing. I've met a lot of competitive riders who don't even really find joy in their horses anymore, it's a job and it's the rider's validation, but it's not a fun hobby like the one it used to be. It's now about proving yourself. The short answer is, a lot of horse girls make horses their entire personality. These days I just ride for pleasure and to hang out with my horse, who is more of a very large dog. People don't even generally know that I ride unless I tell them. Based on my time teaching, there are only two kinds of middle schoolers, those who wear hoodies even in the summer, and those who wear shorts even in the winter. Well, you forgot the third group, those who wear hoodies and shorts all year. The anime girls are now K-pop girls. There are no Koeran students in our school but the Korean club is very active. Emo kids are there but they are very political now. It was annoying when I was a teen and they all tried to out anarchist each other but now it's like Bobby is such a poser, he doesn't even read theory, said by a kid who also does not read theory. Bobby is such a poser, always talking about Marxism but never once mentions dialectical materialism. Does Bobby even read Hegel? Wait, was law school just a big pretentious emo group? Can't imagine Bobby has read the slightest. Emo kids are there but they are very political now. Wait. Isn't that just punk? Emo has its roots in a mockor, a more emotive offshoot of punk back in the 80s, so you're not wrong. What does reading theory mean? This guy clearly doesn't read theory. What a poser. Let's sacrifice his soul to the Dark Lord. Political theory, generally the implication is leftist. Think writers like Marx and Engels, Lenin, Mao, Kropotkin, Bakunin, etc. TikTok really needs a do not show me anyone under 18 option. Why do I have a feeling some people would want the opposite button? Chris Hansen would like a word. When it comes to TikTok, Chris would just want to nuke the whole thing off the map. I don't want to deride the man's professional career, but it is funny that a guy I know went to jail for a $500 bad check and Chris gets charges dropped after $13,000. The economics of criminality in the US is out of control. Yeah my sister had to ban all my nieces off of TikTok because they couldn't trust 9 year olds not to take videos of themselves and post them. They can watch TikToks on YouTube but no way for them to end up in some creeps video collection. Love to hear that. Not enough parents taking social media seriously, for real. It's unimaginable how much content is out there now. I thought under 18 accounts were supposed to be private by default now. I'm not sure though, maybe someone can confirm. E, looks like it's true, web link. It's super easy to lie about age when setting up an account. Plus, private accounts don't help when you're determined to up your follower count and have all the common sense of the average child. Hell, porn sites think I've been 18 since I was 13. Unless something goes to court, no one checks those ages. It's just there so they can make a cookie that proves that the company did attempt to dissuade underage users from their platform. Middle school teacher. Anime kids are more prevalent. A more popular nerd faction is the Rubik's Cube crew. A new group I'm appreciative of is the student body as a whole being more accepting of students who are different than them. From students with special needs at all levels of the spectrum, to the kid who is having a meltdown in front of everyone, kids are overall more evolved to understand they can't help their situation or looks like they're having a bad day. I've witnessed so many moments where I've said out loud, if that happened at my middle school in the 90s, that kid would have either been socially ripped apart by their classmates, or literally been beat up. I'm happy that school life, at least at my school, is much more socially wholesome than when I was growing up. That's not to say there aren't weirdos who say insane edgelord things, but you know what I mean. While a lot of those groups still exist in some form or another, the most unexpected group I've seen this year is a growing number of middle schoolers who everyone calls the stonks. They legit discuss the stock market at lunch. Edit, told my students this comment about them blew up. 
They were stoked. Thank you guys for bringing them so much joy. So it's like family ties from the 80s. One of my friends legit pulled out his phone and showed his $1,700 in Amazon stock. He's 13 by the way. This makes me feel unaccomplished. Before it used to be teenagers building nuclear reactors in their garage or discovering a new treatment for some disease. Now it's kids earning more money in a month doing crazy crap than I would in a year. Yeah I may have to rob this little crap. F I laughed too hard at this. Plot twist, he initially had $12,000 in Amazon stock. This is the way. I'm a teacher and one of my students made a decent chunk off the GameStop stuff. There are a number of stonks clubs and they understand investing more than I do. They game iffy it, which makes it fun. They also have lots of time to dedicate to understanding it and nearly zero chance of ending up on the street after a few bad picks. They can afford to be reckless, so it's all pros and very few cons. I couldn't find a job until I was in college and I didn't have an allowance. Where the F are these stonks kids finding the initial investment capital? Edit, kids, it's too late for me, but there's some good info in the replies. If my kid asked for a hundred bucks to invest and showed any amount of interest in actually studying economics, then hell yes I'd give them a hundred bucks. Heck I'd set up incentives. For every quarter where you end up in the green, I'll give you 50 bucks. I'm a beggar compared to this kid. Where'd he get the money to invest from? Probably a two grand loan from his parents. I was one of those kids. My middle school did a big event where they taught everyone to use to stock market and we had a mock market which was a month long simulation where at the end of the month, those with the most money would get a prize. Once it ended, a bunch of us were obsessed with the stock market. My nephew is 14. Him and his friends all listen to hip hop, ride four wheelers, play sports, and grow mullets. That just means you live in Georgia. I hate you because this is accurate. Rural Floridians would like a word. Northern Florida is just South Georgia. You mean Eshays? That perfectly describes an Australian high school clique. Eshays brea. There really is a word for everything. Here in NC we call them hicks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.